Alright, hello everyone, I am Mephiston and I'm just doing a quick video uh, not really a proper battle commentary just to point out some things about the usage of cavalry and especially heavy cavalry in EB uh, I heard some people maintaining that cavalry is nerfed in EB and uh, this is a kind of follow-up from my last video because I want to point out that cavalry is not nerfed in EB it's just that infantry is stronger in this mod uh, compared to the infantry in uh, vanilla Rome Total War because in, in, in EB you can't really just pack up your cavalry units and charge straight in the face of infantry because you just get torn to shreds Infantry actually has the power to stand up against a cavalry charge, frontal cavalry charge in this mod. So you have to play smart with your cavalry and especially with your heavy cavalry because you can't really afford to lose them because they're expensive, because they're slow, because they are also decisive. Obviously, I am doing this video I am proving my point with uh, an EB online battle because that's where like the competitive environment and the the highest skill in EB is because fr just frankly if you play single player and you try to talk about balance and cavalry balance you just don't know what you're talking about you need to know how to fight, how to properly fight a human opponent in order to talk about balance. So I'm going to shout gas the performance of some cavalry units in this battle. And uh, actually, just a quick look at what's happening on this flank. Basically, there's a missile duel happening here, and I just want to point out very quickly what happens uh, if you exploit the power of formation. Uh, as you can see, he brought my my opponent brought a foot archer unit to support his horse archers against my own horse archers. But as you can see, they have this rectangular formations, which is this rectangular formation, which is really. Uh, prone to getting heavy casualties from flanking fire. This is what I'm doing here. I'm uh, getting really good shots on this unit which is getting torn to shreds. Also, these two um, horse archer units are dealing pretty evenly one against the other. Even if his Skuda Bajinte, the Scythian riders, are way better shooters than my Shivatiri Pahlavanik, my Parthian horse archers. As you can see the numbers are definitely comparable 39, 38 against 38. And that's because his formation is more tightly packed, less spread out than mine which is spread out to the maximum capability of the unit. And also since the Scythians are way more accurate than my horse archers, I managed to run uh, to a rather close distance because at a close distance accuracy matters less. So this is something good to remember, worth remembering for missile duels, especially for missile duels, because that means getting a good advantage in missile duels. Just a quick overview of the armies, apart from the horse archers and the archers and one unit of spearmen, I have a bunch of phalanxes, some medium spearmen, my Thureoforoi, some elite swordsmen, my general, light infantry armed with a lot of javelins and axes, one medium cavalry unit, and one heavy cavalry, my Hellenicoi Catafractoi, which are cataphracts. My opponent, Quiz Quiz, 
uh, he does this a lot. He brought uh, as his first line the spearmen and swordsmen from Galatia, the Galaticoi Quarathoroi, which are heavy unit. He backs them up with some heavy infantry. Here I think he has some spearmen. Yeah, affirmative. And over here he has some wild men, uh, the Tindanotai, uh, the naked fanatics, super strong unit. His bodyguard, heavy kingsman cavalry, chariots, sided chariots, and two units of heavy Scythian cavalry, which is pretty standard for Pontic armies. Armies from Pontus usually bring two Scythian heavy cavalry. So first of all I want to point out how uh, ineffectively he moves his forces. As you can see he runs straight through this line. He started somewhere around here by running his forces along this line all down to here and he's going to follow up with his cavalry too and he's going to charge with his chariots. Why this is bad? This is bad because of stamina. Remember that stamina does not affect only combat performances but also morale. Units with less stamina, which are tired, are more prone to routing, have more fragile morale. And as you can see this unit is already winded, so lost two levels of stamina and is under heavy javelin fire by my light infantry. And this is really bad, of course, he's losing a lot of men, or he's going to, in a second. And he ends up losing the unit as a whole, because they ran amok. I think they ran amok in something like 5 seconds or so. And they wouldn't have run amok if they weren't so tired. Like, if they weren't winded, their morale would have been stronger, or more solid so they probably wouldn't have had this unwanted side effect also his cavalry he's moving his cavalry for nothing over here because he he's trying to take up space but he can't manage to do so so he just has to retreat back in uh, in his back line and this unit is already warmed up, so they lost some stamina over here for basically nothing, because he didn't achieve anything. He tried to take up space, but I ended up taking that space. So he lost stamina and he lost one unit for nothing. On the other hand, I'm conserving my stamina. Uh, now I'm running these cataphracts a bit, but they're gonna stop really soon. Yeah, as you can see, they're just walking here, and they're fresh, because there's really no reason to to uh, to make them run, because there's nothing that they can achieve by running. Now, I just want you to take a quick look at the situation on this flank. Uh, as you can see, there are two major engagements. One over here, the more external one, which involves one of my spearman units, uh, his heavy infantry and some of his cavalry units, and one over here where my infantry is more numerous, more overwhelming, and his heavy infantry is taking on this blob. And there are two free cavalry units on our own uh, back line. Usually, in, when, when you find yourself in this situation, when you and your opponent both have one cavalry unit, one free cavalry unit, non-engaged, in their own back lines with some engaging infantry, you don't want to take the initiative. Why? Uh, it's, it's the same reason uh, that, you, that you see in chess, basically. In some in some occasions you have some stuck pieces in, in chess and by stuck I mean that those pieces cannot move 
unless you want to face bad consequences for your match. So they're basically stuck in a position, in a, a sort of stalemate. And this is kind of the same situation. You want to have a stalemate. You don't want to take the initiative with your cavalry. Because if you engage your own cavalry, then the other cavalry unit, the enemy cavalry unit, will be free to roam around and do whatever it wants because your own cavalry is engaged and especially if you have the disadvantage in the cavalry quality like in this case and for some reason he decides to charge over here with his cavalry and I immediately start running my cataphracts because I saw my chance of using them effectively they're free now because this cavalry cannot charge them or threaten them and so I'm going straight for the throat I'm going straight for this vulnerable unit with the charge in the back and in the flank and this unit is going to lose a lot of men like 20 men this is 20 men in a couple of seconds I'm going to stay engaged because I'm trying to rout this unit he wisely pulls out from here and comes for a charge. This is the correct answer to my move. So he charges straight here. But I just want you to uh, note something. That, that is that his cavalry is already winded. And by that his own charge on my heavy cavalry was not as effective as it could have been and that's because he moved his cavalry in, in a pointless way like pointlessly without achieving anything over here just a minute ago so he didn't do as much damage as he could have done and now he does another mistake why he pulls away his cavalry why this is a mistake because the situation here was stable two infantry units, two cavalry units. This is a fight that we want to take. Uh, this is a fight that is, is at an equilibrium. But if you pull out your own cavalry, then why should I let my, my cataphracts stay here? Why should, should, shouldn't I pull my own cataphracts away? And therefore he goes for a pointless charge here and when he notices that I pulled out my cataphracts, he tries to intercept it, but uh, it's already too late, and I'm going for a second charge over here. And this insta routes the Wildman, which is massive, of course. Massive not only because he loses an important, expensive, and strong unit, but also because this, cha this causes a chain route. This chain routes this other unit, and it chain routes also this other unit and this one and as you will see in a moment the whole flank basically chain routes and breaks on the spot he tries to save the day with his general but it's already too late I think the general routes as well yes it does as you can see the flank is crumbling and I think he admits defeat shortly hereafter. Yeah, he does. And the general dies as well. Seventeen casualties sustained, ninety-seven casualties inflicted. And remember, I did only two charges, only two charges with this cataphract unit. So this is the destructive power of cavalry in EB. And as you could see, this was game changing, or better, game deciding. Like the two charges completely decided the outcome of the game. So this is the point of this video. Cavalry is not nerfed in EB, if you know how to use it properly. So thanks for watching and see you next time.